Good player. Jokes. Here's about the six mutas about to just pop. You know, he had trouble with that overlord. He was a little supply block. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I just don't think uh, there's too much a Protoss can do uh, beyond commit to this and get it, more Phoenixes to fight it off. But uh, it, with enough Queens and Mutalists, uh, he'll be absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, I, I like how he is spreading his creep, though. He's spreading his creep really actively. I mean, people always criticize people for not spreading their creep toward the front. But not only is he spreading it toward the front, not as quickly as he could, but he is spreading it. Uh, he also spread it toward the back, so he has a lot more mobility for his creep, for his queens to kill off any kind of uh, void ray push at the back of the base. So, really nice move. And I like how he's moving in a wide arc with these mutilists. It's going to see if there's any kind of uh, hidden tech or any kind of hidden expos that he should know about. But of course there's none. You see the Protoss is only just now getting up that, that base right there. And those Phoenixes are going to come in, going to snipe the Mutalists really, really quickly. Look at that. Phoenixes are just so good against Mutalists. I mean, the thing is they do plus to light. And not only do they do plus to light, they are so much faster than the Mutalists and so much more agile. It's not even funny. Yeah, here is where the, the weapon upgrades will really help because doing plus to light with two attacks, uh, he's doing 22 damage a shot or whatever, and uh, really, really good against meters. I mean, they, they're heavy micro-intensive, but uh, that's actually not a bad move for him. We've got uh, some Void Rays playing pool with a bunch of Lings here for a little bit, but it looks like they're running out. We'll see what's going to happen with that there. But yeah, uh, the vo you know, the Phoenix and the weapon upgrade, not such a bad choice now. He's definitely, you know, he's got something to field against Mutas. But uh, the problem with uh, the problem with Phoenixes is, is, whoa, look at him killing his own Void Ray there in an act of rage. That was odd. <laughs> and he killed the one with... That one. He killed the one without a lot of hit points either. He must have totally microed that wrong. It looks like he's even admitting to that in chat. Just accidentally a click. He killed a full hit point void ray. Alas. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a huge blunder. Honestly, I don't know if that one void ray would make a huge difference. But yeah, Sounder throwing out that disclaimer. It was on purpose. Of course it was on purpose. Uh, we shouldn't question him after we saw that plus one timing push with the void rays. But yeah, I, I like how... Um, we see that Burn Cell is getting out some Hydralis right now, so the perfect counter. I mean, Void Rays are terrible against them, and Phoenixes in low numbers just don't do enough to Hydralis to really matter. And uh, he is getting his, his main sat uh, sorry, his natural finally saturated, though. And Zerg plays a little behind on his expansions. I think he needs to just go for the gold. Yes, yeah, there we go. Keeping active with limbs. Yep. Uh, one thing that Zerg plays don't just do enough, and I think players in general, is they like to make units and then just sit there and do nothing. I mean, if you have to be killing rocks, something that don't fight back, fine. But at least you're setting yourself up for some sort of uh, long game, uh, a yeah, long macro style game. That's definitely my big criticism everything. of his mutas right now. Is that like he, yeah. like you said, he could use the links to kill the rocks, but he should be being active with those mutas. The whole point of getting mutas is to harass and to make him be annoying and to make him chase you around. And he could easily be attacking the left side of his base, trying to kill a pylon, trying to kill some gas probes. You know, there's stuff he can be doing with that many mutas without really putting them into harm's way. So look yeah. at these three stargates now. He's just mass phoenixing at the moment. That's uh, pretty interesting. This is not a standard response uh, to this kind of an army. Normally the response is you just get a lot of Stalkers and Colossus and you roll him with that army anyways. But heavy, heavy Phoenix usage. I like seeing the variety. That's pretty nice. Yeah, and I think the Zerg player, he needs to just drone harder. I mean, he's way behind on the uh, on the drone count, which is really surprising considering the Protoss went for such quick, quick tech. And now the Protoss, if he's able to get this third up and uh, it's a gold, he's going to have enough income to not only afford the Phoenixes, but to afford the Colossi instead as well, sorry. And uh, that's going to spell a lot of trouble for the Zerg player because uh, he he doesn't really have air dominance, so he's not going to be able to hit the Colossi very easily. And with some well-placed force fields, those Hydralis are not going to be able to do what they need either. So I think the Zerg is missing sort of a timing window. I mean, he has so much. If we look at the army count, uh, he is ahead on army count. And um, he's more ahead than it appears on the army counting station because he does have fewer drones as well. And uh, Sounder is not using his Chrono Boost well to get his tech. And there we go. Finally, as Hanukkah said, he should be attacking with his mutas, should be harassing, and he is harassing, taking out a bunch of probes and forcing them all to evacuate. But I don't know if he knows about this gold base yet, and that's going to be really, really key. Wow, that is a lot of oh, Phoenixes, lot of too. Phoenixes. That, that's enough Phoenixes to actually run away. I completely agree with that. Normally, if you bump into a couple of Vikings or a couple of Phoenixes, you fight them and just get right in their face. But uh, that was the appropriate move. But yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see him do. Just hit the side of the base and, you know, just go right back again. You know, a lot of times I'll, I'll hit one spot, get chased away, and then just go right back again. Because 
you know, a lot of times they just run their defenses back to their front and say, okay, good, we're done with that. Well, I'll just hit him again. But uh, finally, he's expanding a little bit. But like you said, he's got such an army advantage, or at least he had one just a little while ago, because uh, he, he was using all of his uh, larva pretty much to make units and not drones. Uh, he needs to do something with them. So he's just been Absolutely. a little bit too cautious. Yeah, and uh, he is spreading his creep well, and he's setting up some nice forward defense with his spine crawlers, but... Um if he doesn't plan on droning anytime soon, I mean, all these bases are going to go to waste. I mean, he's producing eight hydras, 18 lings, getting all kinds of upgrades, but he doesn't have the economy. He has one drone working on his gold and three drones working at the 12 o'clock position. So right now, the protest, despite being on fewer bases, is just getting a better economy. And uh, if Zerg player is not careful, he's going to get Colossi out on him, but... Oh no, wow, no Robo Bay and uh, getting more gateways. I don't agree with that. All players are doing odd things right now. So, for instance, uh, Burnslow is getting his third evolution chamber up, already researching range and armor, so he's definitely going to be getting melee. He's already going tier 3, which means he's definitely getting ultralisks. And so we've got infestors, the potential for ultralisks, a uh, huge hydralisk army. I mean, just a really interesting varied force here. He needs to use it right now. It is actually the appropriate counter to uh, what we can see on the field. Uh, those phoenixes are interesting, but if he just stops getting air and just lets those phoenixes do their thing, they'll immediately get nailed. And it looks like we just went offline. Just went offline, and I'll try to restart that. Sure. Right, let's see what I can do. But uh, I'll keep going. Okay, because that should be recording. Oh good, yeah, we're back on it, no problem at all. So uh, there he is, he's chasing off those mutas right now with the phoenixes, that's the appropriate response again. Those phoenix, those mutas are basically useless now, because with that many phoenixes and that much plus damage to light armor, he, he just has to kind of run them around. But really, the main body of his army, uh, a couple infestors with some fungal growth and a bunch of hydras, he would just mow down that gateway army. Uh, he really needs to do something before Colossi get out, and I don't think there's any, even any sign of the, the Colossi just yet. Yeah, and the Ultralists are coming out now, so um, as funny as it sounds, I think the best transition, I mean, he already has three warp uh, Stargates, he's already got plus one, plus one on his air, would be to just go carriers and um, try to mass carriers because they do pretty well against Ultralists, they completely wreck Hydralists if the Hydralists don't have the time to focus down the Interceptors, so um, that actually might be a, a great move on the Protoss player's part because he's a little behind now on the on the tech, and I think I, he needs to do something a little bit unexpected. His gateway army needs to fall back. He is in such a bad position there, and all that creep is going to allow the Zerg player to see what's going on and instantly flank if he needs to. So uh, the Zerg player is in a really comfortable position right now, but um, I think the Protoss player, he's, his army is quickly going out of date. And look, Burnslow is now just swimming in money. Look at him. He's got three expansions going up at the same time. Uh, and here's the combat that we want. There's the fungal growth that I wanted to see. There's the, the lings flooding around. There's just not oh, a look at that. None of the zealots can even get involved from that beautiful fungal growth. And look at that. Please flank around with those hydrogels. That would make my day. No A moving a little bit. Decide him to just go up the front. But it's okay. He's gonna shred all of these zealots. He's always gonna even have a chance. And if he can just get enough, you know, with fungal. Does he have enough? No, no one has enough energy. But he's definitely got that. And there goes <laughs> he has enough for infested turns. <laughs> Yeah, that was exactly what he did, and, and uh, now he's just got to make sure he's on top of his macro and his resupply. Uh, if I pull up his production tab, he is definitely getting Ultralisk and a bunch more Lings coming, so uh, he should be right on top of that. Uh, I, I really hate when players bind their Infestors with their attacking group, because what happens is they fungal growth, and then the Infestors just wander in and get killed, instead of having them in a separate group where you can just back them off and let them charge up, because he lost like two out of three of his Infestors for no reason there. But those are minor complaints. Here he is pushing again. Uh, perfect speed links against a bunch of non-blinking stalkers with uh, Ultralisk moving up on the side, uh, just where he wants to be right now. I think this is going to be a good game in just a moment. Yeah, I mean, down. yeah, he just has so many bases, even if they're unsaturated. He has so much production capacity right now. And um, honestly, I think the reason why the uh, Protoss player had so much trouble is just he didn't really tech up. I mean, the Zerg player was really passive, just sort of left him alone, didn't really use his Mutalis, and now... Um, Oh god, the guys should just stop working because I think uh, the memory problems, but yeah, I think they know it's GG. 